Stupendous, and all the endless times they say it. Probably didn't expect me to say that the second time, right? Gotcha! Oh, come on, do we have to deal with this endless logo nonsense again? I think I'm gonna have to deal with this endless logo nonsense again. Help me! It's rare that the sequel is as good as the original. And in tonight's case, the sequel is nowhere near as good as the original, as Night 2 of WrestleMania 38 has a lot more problems in comparison to Night 1. Tonight could be one of those rare moments. Well, Mark Wahlberg just jinxed the momentum of WrestleMania 38 Night 2 by saying this could be an instance of a sequel triumphant over the original. The biggest WrestleMania match of all time. Brock Lesnar vs. Roman Reigns, a match that has literally been in the main event of two prior WrestleMania events, somehow qualifies as the biggest match of all time. Why, just because there's two world titles on the line instead of just one, still isn't as big as Shawn Michaels vs. Undertaker, or several other epic matches I'm too lazy to name. Also, the fact that we are literally moving backwards with the world titles by having another championship unification match, it's like we're in a never-ending cycle. Brand split, unification, combined together. Brand split again. Unification, combined together again. And we all know ending the split the first time was WWE's biggest mistake, hence the reintroduction. Another 10 sins. Well, that's a wrap on the previews. The real show is about to start. Mark Wahlberg refers to night one of WrestleMania as the previews. Damn, that's a low blow to an epic show that overshadows this one. <laughs> Alright, at first I was confused of why there were no opening pyrotechnics in this night and was about to write an entire waste of time rant about it, but then Triple H's music suddenly hit and I no longer cared about anything else. You can't say that WWE doesn't surprise us because that's a lie. It's unfortunate that Hunter had to retire due to his medical condition, however we cannot deny that this send-off at WrestleMania was perfect in every way. I was literally in tears watching this at the stadium. Thanks for a wonderful career. So yesterday, Gable Stevenson was introduced on the stage by Stephanie McMahon, and now he's back to hanging out in the front row like his previous appearances. I guess that's his gimmick or something? The CGI snake was a cool addition, but to me it kinda got ruled with the addition of a second snake acting like Riddle with the Viper being confused at what's going on. Snakes don't wonder what's wrong with their neighbors. Okay, these CGI snakes are seriously annoying me. WWE is going way overboard with the graphics. I'm trying to watch the entrance. I've been waiting around for opportunity. Randy Orton figured the cameras were not watching him and started dancing to the Street Profits theme on the ropes. Caught in 4K, bro. And this is not even a 4K video. The WWE cleanup crews are dicks to Alpha Academy by not sweeping away the red solo cups caused by the Street Profits. Previously already on WWE. Chad Gable. Chad Gable is telling both Riddle and Montez Ford to shoosh, despite the fact that neither man is talking. What is there to shoosh for if they're not saying anything? You mean to tell me that if Riddle did not stop the pinfall, Montez Ford was actually going to be pinned from a simple German suplex? That would have been embarrassing. Since there are no disqualifications in a triple threat, this has me wondering why everyone isn't allowed in the ring at once. All this is practically legal. This one having a very hard time getting things settled down. Well, maybe the referee is not doing much to settle things down because it's practically anything goes. Ever think of that, Byron? We're gonna have to worry about a Whoa! Oh, God, Imagine if Chad Gable did not duck out of the way thinking Montez Ford was actually gonna hit him. Oh my God, seven more fucking logos! Oh. Oh. Otis was nowhere near Chad Gable as he hit the moonsault on everyone else and probably fell just for the joy of falling down. Chad Gable is spending more time a thanking the boo and fans in attendance than he is punishing Riddle. A disqualification rule. Montez Ford was literally in his partner's corner and Angelo Dawkins didn't even think about the possibility of tagging himself in while Chad Gable was distracted? Angelo is indirectly addicted to his own partner then. While locking in the ankle lock on Riddle's bare foot, Chad Gable got a full scent of the sweaty foot and probably thought to himself, I pee you! This cameraman better be careful. There's a big chance that Riddle is so stoned and tries to tag him instead of Randy Orton. First Stone Cold Steve Austin failed to put Kevin Owens through this announce table last night, and now Randy Orton failed to put Montez Ford through the announce table tonight. I'm starting to think they intentionally reinforced the table to prevent destruction. Boring. Face down. No fair, Randy Orton had a head start. The height and athleticism from Montez Ford always amazes me. He and Angelo Doggett's had picture perfect timing on that blockbuster from the top rope. Just in time of both of those super RKO's from both members of RK Bro was the perfect way to end this opening match. For a match that was only 11 minutes long, they made sure to deliver every last second at WrestleMania. Oh, the one thing that was funny about Chad tossing away Gable Stevenson's solo cup was Randy Orton's expression, followed by everyone else leaving the ring to watch the show about to unfold in the ring. Gable Stevenson has Gable! Just from hearing Byron Saxon saying Gable Stevenson has got Gable, why do I got this odd feeling that one of these two dudes is going to lose that name? Also, this big moment with Gable Stevenson getting physical in the WWE ring for the first time was simply a belly-to-belly -belly throw. And that's it. 
See you whenever the hell you show up next. Literally three minutes of watching what went down at last night's WrestleMania event. Matter of fact, last night the promos and commercials took up nearly 40 minutes of screen time. Tonight, the promos and commercials last about 35 minutes of screen time. If you've ever wondered how WrestleMania could get any bigger... Sure, because Omos totally screams WrestleMania just got bigger simply because of his size. It's not like he's the most dominating threat in the business right now. Also, this match is under the category of existing simply because WWE wanted as many wrestlers on the card as possible. When you got two nights for WrestleMania but released over 100 talents in the course of a single year, that's when you're like, oh shit. Bobby Lashley's entrance was freaking awesome, standing on a podium as a way of showing that he truly is the almighty. Those drums sold the moment well. And then cars randomly driving past the stadium saw the CGI graphics in the sky and drove away never to return. And being forced to relinquish the WWE title. Bobby Lashley never vacated the WWE Championship, Corey. While he did not compete at the Elimination Chamber, he was still the champion up until Brock Lesnar won the match. No match for Omos. By saying that, Corey Graves just jinxed Omos's momentum as Bobby Lashley not only beat Omos, but made it look like the easiest thing in the world, which in turn makes us wonder why anyone else didn't try that. With a fist the size of a Christmas ham. Yeah, no, Corey. Omos may be a tall athlete, but he's still not as big as someone like the Big Show in terms of hand size. My lips. Oh. What in the hell was that supposed to be? Looked like Omos thought Bobby was going to counter. Meanwhile, Bobby thought Omos was going to connect whatever move he was going to do next. How did we go from an awesome Raw Tag Team title match to this? In power tonight, it's no mo oh. oh man! So what? Brock Lesnar can do that too. What more? <sighs> I don't even know what to think about this anymore. Can we just end the match now before it gets completely boring? Whoops! Too late. We're already there. Lashley. I'm not the only one cringing at Omos's poor landing for Bobby Lashley's spear, right? Or were we just cringing the entire match? And he put the three. Remember when it was next to impossible just to knock Omos off of his feet? Turns out all you had to do was spear him from behind and then spear him again. It was that easy. Only two superstars have actually commentated. Michael Cole actually called himself a superstar, and he once again reminded us of that god-awful match he had with Jerry the King Lawler at WrestleMania 27. A match so terrible, they had to demolish the entire Georgia Dome just so we never got to look at the one place where Michael Cole had a WrestleMania match ever again. WWE needed Logan Poe and Johnny Knoxville to compete in matches in order to fill up the two-night format. Just gonna get that out of the way before we break down all the crazy shenanigans that's about to happen. I am flying his phone number over Los Angeles. Who would have thought that jackass pranks and leaking phone numbers would actually be one of the most entertaining things heading into WrestleMania 38? I had my doubts, but this has been hilarious entertainment for sure. Stop Sami Zayn does realize that he could have just changed his number and been done with the whole charade, right? Why complain about your number being leaked when you could just change it in a jiffy? Sami really doesn't have the brains of this rivalry, does he? The Johnny Knox. You know how sad and degrading it is for the Intercontinental Championship? Its only appearance at either night at WrestleMania was a small flashback to when Ricochet won the championship. Hasn't even been defended on a premium live event since last year's WrestleMania. Let that sink in while I throw in 15 cents. World used to talk Johnny! Oh, come on. The bell just rang and Johnny Knoxville immediately gets kicked in the face from something he obviously saw coming. If he knows Sami Zayn up and down, then how did he not see that halluva kick coming? Dark shark trying to- Sami Zayn wasting time taunting the cast of Jackass instead of continuing with the beatdown on Johnny. And if anyone knows Jackass, they know that Johnny Knoxville can take any hit and still recover quick. Look at me, I'm being a nerd about Jackass of the WWE sins. What am I doing with my life? Knoxville! Gonna take out the trash- Come on, Michael. We couldn't get through one minute without you making a pun about trash cans when they get introduced. And right across the spot! Even though this is what Johnny Knoxville does for a living, I am still glad that WWE allowed him to take as much damage as possible, because that crutch shot looked more brutal than others since it didn't shatter on impact. I think he got shocked Put to electric in here. Next to the hilarious action that takes place, the other great thing about this match is Pat McAfee's commentary. I'm glad they expanded this match from his match so that we could hear more of his epic commentary. Table full of mouse traps was a creative decision without a doubt. It's like watching Jackass and ECW at the same time. And oh! Only Johnny Knoxville could come up with a brutal weapon shot and make it look hilarious at the same time, smashing Sami Zayn's head with two garbage can lids as if they were symbols. This just might be the show stealer. It's on Knoxville before. Oh! Air horns are annoying, but there is no way in hell that they would suddenly stop Sami Zayn in his tracks. If he's already running for a halluva kick, then he should have no problem completing the move before losing his earring. I am deeply concerned that this video is getting demonetized as a result of Chris Pontius ripping his clothes off like he normally does. I got my sensor blur on standby just in case he removes anything else. His cheeks were just starting to get over! <laughs> Come on!
Come on, Pat. Stop making me laugh so much. I'm trying to be an asshole for this video. Just take away five cents for that comment a little while and compose myself. <laughs> we man so ass. That body slam from Wee Man was so fucking awesome and perfect that even WWE's haters are having a great time watching this match. This is some of the funniest shit in WrestleMania history, and I'm glad they did this. The Johnny Knoxville reveals that he is the one who has been operating WWE's pyrotechnics all these years. Dun dun dun! Johnny Knoxville is addicted to Sami Zayn's, and for once, that's getting a center mover instead of an addition. We truly are in a bizarre situation tonight. Oh, look at this! Oh, ah! Sorry, but it doesn't work this time because it seems like the punt machine malfunctioned and was nowhere near Sami Zayn's when it struck him. Oh, no! The appearance of the high five machine was shockingly one I did not see coming, even despite actually being there in the stadium. So that was crazy to experience. After oh, no! This match is better than anything you ever bitched about! Oh, oh no! Oh no! Yeah! That could have been a great ending to this chaotic and entertaining match. Unfortunately, the giant mousetrap malfunctioned and whacked Johnny before it collapsed on Sami Zayn. Knoxville with the win! Sami Zayn could have easily escaped from this trap, judging by his movement, but somehow didn't. Great match, poor ending. WWE is hyping up tonight's main event as if it's coming up next, only in this case, we aren't falling for the trick. Women's Tag Team! Another example of a match that really did not need to exist at WrestleMania. Matter of fact, the Women's Tag Team Championship should no longer exist, period. It's been one of WWE's biggest failures. Also, this match started off as Carmella and Queen Zelina against Sasha Banks and Naomi. Then Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan won a match to earn a spot in this match, followed by Natalya and Shayna Baszler being added in as the extras. It's like WWE could not even make up their minds on who should be in the match. Here's another 15 sins, honestly. Also, also, nearly eight minutes of entrances for a match that's just two minutes longer than that. This was the perfect time for me to get some more food and drinks for myself at the Losers Lounge. It's boss time! It was annoying when Michael Cole said that. It's even more annoying when Byron Saxton says that it's boss time. Sweet ride Sasha Banks has, though. What in the hell did we interrupt Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan doing backstage when we told them it was time for their entrance? Which my blushing bride to be? Normally, I give a shit about marriages, and I'm happy for newlyweds, but when it's shoved in our faces constantly on an entertainment program like WWE, it gets seriously annoying. There is going to be a celebration. It's, it's gonna be cool. dirty. Corey Grace practically admitted that he and Carmella were going to have a live sex celebration in the ring at WrestleMania, which shockingly sounds far more entertaining than what we are watching right now. Shockingly. Okay, Byron! Jimmy Smith had to enunciate Byron Saxon's name just so Corey Graves understands that he's not being spoken to at the moment, as Corey has a massive erection at ringside for his fiance. Committed to beautiful? lose. Carmella seriously asked the question about whether or not she is beautiful while wearing her sex mask used in bed with Corey Graves. The only one who would agree is Corey, but even Queen Zelina is saying hit or miss on the beauty. Here's another thing that doesn't make sense and irritates the fuck out of me. An hour ago, we had a triple threat tag team match where each team had a member allowed to be in the ring at once. Now we have a fatal four-way tag team match where two entire teams are shit out of luck. Fuck this whole thing. Before Natalia and Shayna Baszler attacked Naomi, Sasha Banks could have easily tagged her in, but literally missed Naomi's hand. Probably because she sucks at tagging in teammates. Sasha Banks, oh, oh, oh. Liv Morgan did great on the suicide dive, then you got Sasha Banks who completely botched it. Carmella and Queen Zelina had to literally run forward just so Sasha could hit something. Wearing up now, roll through. Sasha is really not doing well tonight at all. Wasting time posing, then couldn't even get Liv's left shoulder on the canvas when she rolled her up. I really want to just say skip. <laughs> Carmella tags herself in, causing Shayna Baszler to be tagged out, and all Shayna does is say, why did you do that, and walk back to her corner. Kick her fucking ass! Remember when you used to be a psychotic destroyer in the ring? Is that? Working together. <laughs> Hey, back oh. into the mix, down goes Carmella. Natalia takes down Carmella, then suddenly backs up as if she was in pain just so Naomi could attack. The fuck? Also, multi-team match causes chaos where each member hits a move, then gets hit by the next until there's only two left, cliche. Yeah. Would have been a lot cooler if both sides were synchronized, with Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley connected the powerbomb superplex combination simultaneously. What I will admit is the finish of this match was actually cool, and Sasha Banks and Naomi synchronized their double-team maneuver very well in that exchange. Well, at least one sin is being removed here. Who cares about this guy's pain? Skip! 140,000! Okay, if you're combining together the amount of fans being in attendance over the course of two nights, don't pretend that there were 70,000 different fans attending the second night. Over half the audience was present for the previous night. Being acknowledged that WrestleMania just might be the greatest accomplishment these guys will ever get inside AT&T Stadium. Oh! 
AJ Styles getting cut open from hitting the start of the stage is the big reason why WWE should never have tiny ass entry points for their setups at WrestleMania. Be lucky he didn't get concussed as a result of that. Edge's new gimmick and new theme song from Alter Bridge is absolutely insane. And this entrance of him sitting on a throne surrounded by fire paying homage to his days in the brood without directly playing the brood's theme was majestic. Fucking love this repackage of Edge. And it's I'm not sure exactly, but I think Edge and AJ Styles have circled around the ring at least five times. Getting a little dizzy here. Right now, you gotta believe that Smart move on the part of Edge to make AJ Styles think he could hit another arm drag takedown, then cause AJ to fall back on his head. Gotta love the veteran instincts. More laps around the ring. Was this match stipulated as a circle the course a thousand times match before it began? Matchup. Neither man wants to get do something. Is he thinking phenomenal form? No. Even if Edge didn't counter with his knees, AJ Styles was aiming the 450 splash on Edge's legs anyway, instead of his midsection. That shoulder breaker. Edge clutches his left knee in pain, even though it was his right knee that connected with AJ's shoulder. We don't know why we are showing you this random graphic of Edge on the stadium instead of what's currently going out of the ring, but shut up and stop questioning our tactics. And if seeing the graphic of Edge wasn't enough, here's a camera pointing at AJ Styles' graphic on the other side. Get it? The other side? Because it's, 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 yeah, never mind. It's tough to tell if Edge is hurt or if AJ Styles farted and Edge is trying to get away from the terrible smell. To the ropes, Edge is away! Transition to I guess in a way, it was a smart move for Edge to transition from an STF to a crossface, but from the direction he pulled AJ Styles, it was mostly him that made Edge's foot reach the ropes. Here we go, get another big shot of all the stars, the stadium, the screens, and nine more fucking Lucas! Styles! Did Byron Saxon just say aisles as in the aisles at a grocery store? What is he doing, directing someone on the phone to the frozen food section? Who's down? We interrupt WrestleMania 38 to bring you WrestleMania 35, where Ronda Rousey's shoulders were off the mat, yet the referee ignored it. Almost got into that same position with Edge here. Is this match seriously so boring to the WWE that they gotta keep showing views of the nosebleed section just to entertain the viewers? How is Styles still in this fight? Corey Grace has been watching AJ Styles for so long, yet still questions how he's able to stay in big-time matches like this one. Result in even though it's been over two years since Edge was medically clear to compete, I still get scared when he goes through risk-taking moves like that superplex under the ring apron. I'm gonna take a couple sins off for that scary yet amazing maneuver. There it is! 450 splash spanking. Normally, wrestlers suddenly kick out with momentum of unknown origins, but here Edge sells the Styles Clash well by barely moving his shoulder off of the canvas long enough to stop the count, showing off near unconsciousness. Major props because that's what wrestlers should always do in scenarios like this. Damian Priest is at ringside, but could you imagine if AJ Styles didn't see him at all? Matter of fact, Damian doesn't seem to be doing anything to distract AJ. He's actually staring at Edge. Guess it's AJ's own fault that he got distracted. Oh, I was looking for it. Mid-air spears are always fun to watch. Reminds me of AJ's great feud with Roman Reigns back in 2016, conveniently after a WrestleMania event at this exact stadium. I've said it last year, and I'll say it again this year. Why do we have to add in the WrestleMania named a Backlash? I'm pretty sure the world could figure out that Backlash is the WrestleMania Revenge event without WWE literally telling us that it is. The unholy okay, that is way too bright. It's one thing to see a silhouette of Sheamus, but here we can't see him, Ridge Holland, or Butch. Much as this match did not need to exist on either night, I gotta take a sin off with a shout out to Big E as he recovers from the broken neck injury. Praying that he's gonna be okay. Including your uncle and your dad. Pre match assault taking place while a recap of SmackDown is playing. Yikes, not a good start to something that doesn't even last. And Kofi takes the looking to end this quickly. If only Kofi Kingston was facing the other side while pinning Ridge Holland, this match could be over and we wouldn't have to deal with any subsequent beatdowns. Well, Butch has got to be careful. Man, what has happened to the former Pete Dunne? It's like now he can't contain himself and acts like a spoiled child. I don't see this gimmick going anywhere, to be honest, but if I'm wrong, then I'll apologize later. The focus on the map is trying to somehow... The referee never saw Kofi Kingston tagging Xavier Woods, yet deems it legal. If the referee never saw it, then it is not legal. Those are the rules. Now use them. Sheamus and Ridge with a victory. I don't know what's more sad, the fact that New Day got completely squashed in less than two minutes, or the fact that Sheamus, one of WWE's most accomplished wrestlers of the last 13 years, never once got legally tagged into this match at WrestleMania. Whatever the case is, I'm going to throw in another 20 cents, because this was a match that got postponed and was a complete waste of time in the end. For God's sake, the main event is not up next yet. That's the second time tonight, guys. I know you're excited to see a main event we've seen two previous times, but please, be patient. I didn't do this in the first part because I know that The Undertaker was going to be back for this one. So it's here that I'll take off 30 sins as a salute to the literal greatest of all time. 
Exciting as it is that Pat McAfee got a chance to compete at WrestleMania, this match exists simply because... Shut up. That's why. One day, Vince McMahon decides that Pat should compete at Mania, and Austin Theory just happened to be kissing Vince's ass on a 24-7 basis and said, I want in. Guarantee I'm going to be a biased announcer here tonight. Michael Cole finally admits what he should have admitted 11 years ago for the entirety of 2011. Took him long enough. A future Universal Champion! Nice announcement. I guess if we're going down the route that Drew McIntyre went through, we'll expect Austin Theory to get fired in about five years, come back three years later, and win the Universal Championship a further three years later. I'll be ready for that big celebration in 2033 when I'm 37 years old. CGI selfie graphics? Oh my god, this is getting to be a little too much here. I was honestly thinking that Pat McAfee could have a fun entrance, but I did not expect it to be so epic. Bringing in the cheerleaders of the Dallas Cowboys as a reference to Pat's time spent in the NFL, even if he was part of a different team, was an awesome touch, and I was dancing to the music the whole time. Love this guy. Check this out. The punt kick to the football was a nice touch, but the sound of the pyrotechnics was honestly not needed. If, if McAfee wins tonight, he'll join me as being undefeated. Fuck you! Skip and a very, a very stunned early. And you know, for the first time ever, Michael Cole is actively cheering for someone in the ring, and it doesn't sound annoying. He's even standing up like Pat McAfee normally would, channeling his inner Pat. I like it. Barry's in trouble. Barry. Damn, I never thought I'd see the day where someone nearly botched the standing Hurricane Rana, then repositioned their legs in midair to fix the error and still connect the move flawlessly. What a fucking stupendous moment at WrestleMania. Pun. Fully fucking intended. It's for you. Oh, snap suplex by McAfee. Michael Cole is so caught up in the emotion that he forgot it was Austin Theory who connected the snap suplex, not Pat McAfee. I think Theory's feeding off this. Taking laps around the ring while his opponent is laid out. Who does Austin Theory think he is? Jack Swagger or something? Michael, you would know something about that at WrestleMania, right? Ocean, hey, stay focused. Oh, Mac I can't believe I said this in part one and repeating it again in part two. Michael Cole refers to Pat as Matt and probably Mrs. Matt Stryker, who left WWE nearly a decade ago. Pat McAfee's beating the hell! Only Pat McAfee could put on a headset, kick someone's ass, and commentate about it at the same time. He's only been in WWE for a couple of years, and he's already a fucking legend. This is awesome. The McAfee, very not sure what to do. Holy for the brand. Now, come on. How can you not love this match? How can you not believe WWE when they say WrestleMania is going to be stupendous, even if they overuse the word? This 10-minute match was worth every last second, and you can't change my mind. Let's take off 10 cents. Does he have it? The sudden roll-up victory by Pat McAfee also made this moment absolutely stupendous because none of us expected him to win the match, so the fact that it was out of nowhere increased the electricity in the stadium. Holy shit, I got chills. We don't even need the main event anymore. This honestly was plenty. I can't believe it! When Michael Cole's voice broke, you could actually feel the raw emotion. He should honestly continue to commentate without emotion next to Pat McAfee. It would make SmackDown far more entertaining than what we got right now. Truth, you suck. <laughs> Pat McAfee instantly challenges Mr. McMahon to a match, which causes me to activate the impromptu match sin. Probably should have kept the victory and the undefeated streak. Oh no! And people say they don't give a shit about Vince McMahon. All Vince has to do is remove the jacket of his suit, and the audience of a jam-packed stadium is going crazy and giving a standing ovation. Name me one current wrestler who can do that in 2022. Just one. I'll wait. What the hell's the referee doing in there? Michael, why do you think there's a referee in the ring? You think he's gonna host a tea party or something? Oh, from behind! Post-match, yet also pre-match assault. Very weird turn of events we got going on here. What's going on? Well, we just heard the, the bell, bell ring! ring. Terrible clothesline, obviously, but what would you expect from Vince McMahon? Doesn't change the fact that the audience is going nuts and cheering louder for Vince wrestling than they were for Cody Rhodes returning last night. True statement. Oh, come on now, Dragon! That's a disqualification! Michael Cole would be great at Cinema Sins 2 expansion, but we also never know. Vince could have told the referee that it was a no disqualification match and we just never heard it, but since we didn't, we assume it's just a regular match. So, Sin. A full minute of Vince McMahon figuring out where he's going to punt Pat McAfee all just to give the softest punt of the world, which actually gives him the win, shockingly. Sad as it was to see Pat go down like that, it was also historic because it took Vince literally all the years of WrestleMania before he finally got an actual win. One would think he'd be undefeated given it's his creation, but I guess he really does care for the wrestlers. This was just a one-off to put a win in the win column. In the entire history... Vince McMahon reacting way too late to Stone Cold Steve Austin's entrance theme, forgetting that it was Austin Theory's theme, accidentally spoils who's coming out.
What? But even still, the sound of the glass shattering and the look of trauma on the face of Vince McMahon never gets old. Absolutely never. Listen to that fucking crowd. Stone Cold Steve Austin arrives, still wearing his ring gear from last night. I suppose we should expect a second impromptu match where Steve finally defeats Vince in a match at WrestleMania after their decades of feuding. Austin stuns Austin! Austin Theory reacting to the stunner and a combination of The Rock and the late Scott Hall was one of the best I believe I can fly moments in the stunner's history. Although Michael Cole's line of Austin stuns Austin probably is what convinced the WWE to shorten the name to just Theory the following week. Thanks a lot, asshole. <laughs> The incoming stunner obviously sucks, but the buildup is amazing. You got Vince telling Steve to stand back while he tests out the broken skull beer first, and yet Vince still falls for the stunner in the end. But Austin oh! I've seen a lot of complaints saying Vince botched the stunner. Those who complain fail to realize that Vince always botched the stunner, so nothing is new here. It's the worst stunner we've ever seen, Stone Cold knows it, and I'm removing another five cents for it. If you don't like it, I'll gladly botch a stunner myself because this was stupendous and you know it. Oh, no! This will never get fucking old. Let's just end WrestleMania 38 right now. We don't need no title unification between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. The crowd could get sent home right now and we'd be happy. Who the fuck would disagree with that? <laughs> Pat McAfee simply being a legend over here. I'm surprised I don't even have any sins left. There has never been a match like this. Well, let's see. Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns happened twice before the main event. Winner take all happened four times at WrestleMania, including twice in the main event. Championship unification also previously happened at WrestleMania. So actually, we have seen a match like this. Everything about it is something we've previously seen. So here are 50 sins for that factually incorrect statement. Also, this match is billed as the biggest match of all time, when about 10% of fans max would agree with that statement. The rest of us have seen bigger. Way bigger. One thing we can't deny is the music and the promo and the build up was actually great. It's just a shame that we've seen this match many times already, and the unification shit is stupid and unnecessary, but still, Metallica, y'all. I know that Roman Reigns is waiting for a specific time frame so he can hold up the Universal Championship, but he must have had bad timing because he stares at the title for nearly 20 seconds before finally moving. It's unnecessary enough that there are outdoor fireworks that nobody in the audience can see, but now we got a big CGI figure of Roman Reigns also hanging out outside the stadium. Can't believe I'd say this, but for once I'm disappointed in the entrance of Brock Lesnar. We are in Dallas, Texas, and he has been Cowboy Brock for months. This would have been the perfect opportunity for him to walk into Mania on a Cowboy-style entrance. Damn. Ladies and gentlemen! I will give credit where credit is due. The double introduction by Paul Heyman for Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar for himself was a great touch added in. Abs at WrestleMania. Ha ha, Brock Lesnar dropped the WWE Championship. One question. If this match was to unify the WWE Championship with the Universal Championship, then why are both titles still independently active as their own lineage, instead of one being retired in favor of the other? You know, how a unification actually works. The winner of this match is just a double champion, not a unified champion. It ain't unified unless there's only one active lineage. That's how it works. Bare knuckle time. Some probably didn't notice this, but Roman Reigns had a look of fear on his face when Brock Lesnar removed his gloves. He's reminded of what happened at WrestleMania 34 when Brock bloodied him to a pulp. Great storytelling by the expressions. Paul Heyman being frightened of Brock Lesnar or pretty much anyone is always funny to watch. I'll remove a sin now, but I still wish Paul got caught in an F5 tonight. It was all Roman's idea! Brock Lesnar, of all people, should know better than to be distracted by Paul Heyman begging for his life, right? How could he possibly fall for this? Roman Reigns should probably realize that if Brock Lesnar gets counted out, he still retains the WWE Championship. I understand if Roman is against the idea of unifying world titles, but he still looks stupid trying to accept a count-out win at WrestleMania. What made this moment funny was Brock's hand motion looking like Diamond Dallas Page before catching Roman into the German suplex. Although, to the surprise of no one, this match is still the same as the previous encounters we've seen time and time again. Suplexes and finishers and nothing else, really. Where's Seth Rollins with a briefcase when we need him? Oh, the referee gets knocked over at the crucial point of the match, cliche. Let me guess, another attempt at a low blow is coming next? Oh, wait a Why am I not surprised? Roman! All the momentum in the world! Take Roman knew that Brock was facing away from him, right? So why didn't he run off the ropes one more time just to get into the correct position? That spear was more of a football tackle and a botch tackle at that. And this could be it! Oh, come on! One thing I actually admire is Brock Lesnar still uses the Kimura lock even if it's very rare. At the time where you should least expect it, there it is! 
Injuries to Roman's shoulder and Brock's ribs are probably why this main event did not deliver as well as one would hope. Such a shame, but it is what it is. Cover for the win! He got it! The fast count was unnecessary. I bet even the referee was bored from seeing this match and wanted to end the night. But still, congrats to the supposedly unified world champion, Roman Reigns. Took him all the matches before he finally beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Watch this, we're probably going to see this match again at WrestleMania 40. WWE Champion and Universal Champion? I thought Roman Reigns unified the titles, not win both as a double champion with two separate titles. Hmm, something is wrong here.